Hello, my name is Paul Little and I have the privilege of serving as pastor teacher of Bib Mount Zion Baptist Church in Macon, Georgia. It is my honor to welcome you to our live mobile experience as we prepare ourselves to hear God's word. We're excited about all that God is doing here in our worship experience and we wanna welcome you to the streaming services of Bib Mount Zion Baptist Church. Be blessed and enjoy the experience. Y'all stand up, everybody stand up, everybody stand up, everybody stand up, everybody stand up. And will you thank God for all of our young people this morning, from the children to the middle and high schoolers, Kamari. Come on, these are our young people. Let's give God some great praise this morning. Lord, have mercy on me. Take your seats this morning. I don't, I'm telling y'all, when I tell y'all I'm full this morning, to see our young people to stand up here with so much boldness and courage. Amen. I don't know if you all, you probably take this for granted, but you know, the view is different when you're sitting out there and you stand up here and you're a child or a young person and you see a couple hundred people, it could be intimidated. But they did a fabulous job leading songs and where is Adriana? Led the song this morning. Is Adriana, where is she? Oh, y'all give Adriana a hand for leading that first song. And then I told this young lady, she already knows, I love her voice and her spirit. Shayna Gordon, where is Shayna? Y'all thank God for all of our leaders. And will y'all thank God for the leaders of our music ministry? Come on. Give God praise for Joey and Jennifer, Miss Anita, Miss Amber, Mama, all of those who helped to put this together. I'll tell you the truth, I'm excited. And we're going to be seeing more of that. We are, we are a church that's blessed with an abundance of young people. And we want to give them every opportunity. Kamari sent me a song the other day couple weeks ago, not that song, but another song, and I said, man, this sounds good. Who is this? He texted me back, said, me. <laughs> I said, what? Because if you see him around church, he's so quiet and laid back. We didn't know all that was in him, did we? Come on, give him one more hand, y'all. That's incredible. And Kamari, am I right? Did you write that one for today? He wrote that just for today, y'all. I, I, I hit him back. I said, man, I need you to do something on the third Sunday, man. I, listen, it's children and teen Sunday. I need you to put something together. And literally in a few days, you see how gifted our young people are. God has blessed us, and we're incredibly excited. Will y'all help me to thank God for, this is my opinion, the most dynamic minister of youth and young adult discipleship, Minister Kayla Smith. Come on, y'all. Thank God for her leadership. All the team who volunteer. We have some wonderful volunteers. I don't know if you all know it or not, but when they go back in the back, they're not back there playing tic-tac-toe. They're teaching our young people. and They're using creative methodology to teach our young people, and we're very excited about that. This is Children and Teens Sunday. Each Sunday this month, we're focusing on different demographics. The first Sunday was marriage. The second Sunday was college and young adults. Last Sunday was off the hook. And then today is children and teens, and then next Sunday, we're going to do something for the single people. Any single people here? All the single people? All the single Oh, okay. Oh, 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 okay, all right, so. Do I have any young people that brought somebody to church with them today? Any young people brought some people to church? Kamara, you brought some people to church? Who brought some people to church? How many people you brought to church? You brought one person? How many people you brought? Who, who you brought? Your auntie is here? You brought some people to church? How many people you brought to church? Who is that, Anaya? How many people you brought to church? One? How many people you brought to church? One? Who bought five? Now y'all need to say something now. Who bought six? Lil D? Oh, y'all brought six people? Oh, anybody brought more than six people? Kamari, who you brought? Lord, have mercy. 
All right, come up here. And then I want little Derek. Come up here, little Derek. Come here. We're going to be a blessing to both of y'all. Come on. How many, everybody who came with Kamari, stand real quick. Not members now, not members. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people? Praise the Lord. These are all your people? I'm going to bless you with that one, all right? Deacon Grant said he's your sponsor. Is, is he with you? He with you? You know when you blow up, people try to take credit for your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm his agent then. I'm his agent. Lil' D, uh, what we gave Kamara? We gave you $75? That's $75 for you, okay? We're going to give you $25. Is that okay? All right. Now, I need a young person, the first young person to come up here who wants to win $25. The first person to come to the stage. Y'all late. Y'all late. Y'all late. Well, actually, let me get let me get May. Let me get May. I see Cam. Let me see, bro. May, come in for a second, because I don't think you've had an opportunity to do this. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do something because this is gonna require a teenager to do this. So I'm gonna do something special for you two. I want y'all to come see me after church. Okay. You got me. I'm, I'm gonna give a prize to you two after church because somebody's gonna let me hold some money after church. You got me because y'all were the first ones that came up. Give Cabria and Cam a hand. Give them a hand. Y'all go sit, okay? Um, see me after church, okay? They, they were the first ones that ran up, so I'm going to give them something. But, but this is going to be a little bit more difficult for a, a child. I need a teenager, so come stand right here. You got to do this fast now, okay? Because we got we to gotta get in this room. Stand, stand over there. Tell everybody your name. James. All right. Everybody say, what's up, James? James. This is a star athlete, by the way. Stand over there now because you can't look right. You can't look right here. Stand up. Go, move on over. Move over. Move over. There you go. Okay. You ready? Now, I'm going to give you, somebody help him to write these down, okay? Uh, Minister Henry, I want, you to, I want you to notate everything that he says. So you see Minister Henry standing, sitting right there? He's going to put these in his phone as you say it, okay? You got to listen to the instructions, okay? You have, I'm going to give you two minutes to tell me at least 25 things you can do with a smartphone. You get a dollar, if you give me at least 25, you get $25. You can do that? Everything you can do with a, productive things you can do with a smartphone. Go down, productive thing. Minister Henry, come meet him now, cause, he, cause we, got, we about to hit the clock on him. You ready? What does that mean? Yeah, you can do multiple things. You ready? Y'all got him? Okay, y'all clap for him so we're we going to help him. Ready? You got to tell him. You, you might want to go over there because the time for the go. Ready? Go. You got to give me more than call, call, call now. Come on now. <laughs> How many? He said that's at least 50. You almost there? How many you got? You got at least 25? Okay. I'm going to give you this gift card. Thank you, Minister. Okay. All right, young people, pay attention. Because I'm getting ready to preach about something that deals with technology. So listen to this. Hold that for me on the screen. Hold that for me. Okay. Here, here's multiple things, productive things you can do with a smart device. Y'all ready? Okay. Here are multiple functions for a, a smartphone. It's a telephone. It's a de Count these for me, Henry. It's a device that sends text messages, email, you can read books, it's a library to read books, you can write a blog, 
watch educational videos, use a calculator, pay your bills, invest in stock, maintain your credit score, learn a new language, use it as a dictionary, use it to take pictures, use it to record videos, use it to create graphics and flyers. It's a word processor for typing. It's a flashlight. It's a calendar. It's a notepad. It's a TV. It's a device that you can use for home security. You can upload music like SoundCloud. It's also a music player to listen to music, iPod. You can use it for shopping. Some of y'all do that, a lot of that. Video conferencing, check weather, a GPS for traveling, a health tracker to monitor your heart rate. It'll check your steps, a remote control for your TV. You can start your vehicle. You can pay for things in stores who offer that. And last, but not, and certainly not least, you can read the Bible and you can download the BMZ app. <laughs> How many I have? How many? 33. Now I want you to see my point. All my young people who have cell phones, stand up. If you have a tablet, stand up. Even the little ones. So watch this. So watch this, everybody. I'm getting ready to preach a message. I want you to pay very close attention. And even adults can appreciate this. Notice all the things I just named that you can do with a smart device. It would be a shame to have that much wisdom and power in your hands and you only use it for a few things. To text, to go on social media, that's, that's cool. But notice all of those productive things I just named. So I'm getting ready to preach about technology and I want y'all to pay very close attention because I want to share some wisdom with you that I believe that can help you as you are growing up in what we're calling the information age. Uh -huh. Sounds good? Y'all give our young people a hand. Let's jump into the word real quick. All right, everybody grab a Bible very quickly. I'm in Matthew chapter number 6, beginning at verse 22 and 23. I need to see everybody with the Bible, everybody with the Bible. If you don't have one, it's there on the screens, but I need everybody to grab a Bible. Let's take some good notes. Young people, I need to see you taking notes. Who knows what other prize we're going to give away? Who knows? I'm not saying we are, but who knows? Anything is possible. We had a blessed, blessed morning. If you are missing the praise break at 8, you're missing a mighty, mighty blessing. Where is Miss Pam Faison? Is Miss Pam gone already? Miss Pam and the team, Joey and Jennifer, our music ministry team, uh, led us so wonderfully this morning. Then we had an awesome surprise this morning at 8 a.m., Shock me, shock everybody. We all up here worshiping and crying and weeping. But I need you to go back and I need you to talk to the media team. I need you to get the CD or the DVD. Our leading lady sung a song, led a song in worship this morning, y'all. I said, Lord, have mercy. And sung it too. I said, Lord, have mercy. I, didn't, I had no clue. She stepped out of here and just led us in worship. And I tell you, I sent her a text while she, I was distracting, Deacon Grant, I apologize, I was distracting her in Sunday school. Uh, I was kind of flirting with her because I was, you know, uh, it just did something to my heart to see her up there. I was worshiping, but I was kind of checking her out too. So, uh, Lord, amen. So, uh, praise the Lord and we serve a good, good, right. So y'all give our leading lady a great big hand. Um, that just blessed me. I'm so proud of you, dear. So proud of you. Yeah, we've had a blessed time. We've had a blessed time this morning. So let's see what God has to say to us. All my young people, stay tuned now. If you have a child, if you have grandchildren, if you have nieces, nephews, if you are even concerned about children and young people, I want you to listen to this message. It's, it's directed to our children, but it's really for all of us because we are responsible for raising this generation. You've heard the African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. But you know, one thing we got to get back to is we got to raise the village too. Because the village around us 
is crumbling in many regards. And so in, in, in light of us trying to raise our children, we also got to raise the village so that the village can help us to raise our children. How many of you grew up in a time like me when everybody was a part of your village? You can get beat like 20 times and you got love by a whole lot of people. You got encouragement from a lot of people. You got whoopings from a lot. You know, we just had a village. And I want us to be prayerful as a church of how we can reintroduce that idea of what it means for us to be a village. Amen? All right. All my young people who has Matthew 6, 22 and 23 say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, I don't have it. All right, now, it, it, I, been, I done said it 10 minutes ago now. Matthew 6, 22, 23. Listen to what the word of God says. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Let me read that again. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light to your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. This is Children and Teens Sunday, and as I said, this word is really for all of us, especially those who have care and concern and responsibility for helping to raise and rear young people. I want to label this message, Clean Your Screen, Living Pure in the Information Age. Everybody say, Clean Your Screen. Yeah, I want to talk about Clean Your Screen, Living Pure in the information age. Listen to my disclaimer, everybody. This is not an anti-technology sermon. Amen? This is not a message that is going to bash technology and how evil technology is and how worldly technology is and the devil. This is not that kind of message. Because if, if used appropriately and correctly, Technology is a wonderful gift from God. If used responsibly and correctly, technology helps us to advance the kingdom of God. Technology is like money. Money is not good or evil. It, it all depends on whose hands it's in. With a $20 bill, you can go out and you can be a blessing to buy some food. Or you can turn around and buy something like drugs or something that's that's unhealthy for you. It, it all depends on whose hands it's in. Technology is like money. It is not good or bad. It all depends on whose hands it's in. Modern technology is not evil. It all depends on the heart of the person who's using it. I've heard grown people say to me, Pastor, you know, I don't, I don't believe in no technology. I don't use no technology because Facebook broke up my marriage. That's impossible. Facebook didn't mess up your marriage. You wandering into other people's DM is, is, okay, let me get back to the children, amen. Amen, you, you reconnecting with your old girlfriend from middle school is what broke up your marriage. And Facebook was the vehicle that was used, but it is not, it is not evil because it all depends on the heart of the person that's using it. Social media is not evil in and of itself. It's a wonderful tool. Do you realize that in this sanctuary, on average, we minister physically to about 600 to 650 people on average that may come consistently throughout the month. But then by way of social media, YouTube and Facebook and the BMZ app, there's another six to 700 people who watch regularly who we don't even see physically in this sanctuary. We're able to spread the message of the gospel to people who are not physically sitting here all because of the gift of modern technology. So if it is used correctly, technology is a wonderful thing. But we also realize that there are some dark opportunities. There are some avenues, there are some various um, offerings, if you would, as it relates to technology. 
And this text really helps us to understand a very important principle. And I want all my young people to hear this lesson and to hear this principle because this is what the entire message is all about. Your eyes are entry points to your mind. Everybody repeat after me. My eyes are entry points to my mind. All right, the text is talking about the eye, but let me give you this other one. All of us have two entry points to our minds. What are they? Eye, number one, and what's the other one? Your ears. Y'all a smart class. I can tell y'all come to church regularly. This is wonderful. Listen, your eyes and your ears are the entry points to your soul. So whatever you expose your eyes and your ears to is helping to shape your life. That's what this text is talking about. The eye is the light of the body. If, you're, if, if your eye is healthy, if what you're receiving, if what you're exposing your eyes to is healthy, it says your whole body is going to be healthy. But likewise, if exposed to darkness, it's a deep darkness, the New Living says, which has the potential to shape the way you live. Your eyes are the entry points that is open shaping the person you will become. So whatever you watch on a regular basis is shaping your thinking. Your thinking is shaping your behavior. Your behaviors shape your habits, and your habits shape your character. So you are the sum total of what you watch on an everyday basis. And we are living in what is called the information age. When everything is on screens, so, so multiple hours upon hours throughout the day, our young people are scrolling yes. screens. Eyes are being exposed to things that are not of God. Amen. Eyes and ears are being exposed to things that have the potential to redirect their journey. Eyes being exposed to things that gives them 24-7 access to whatever you want. That's dangerous. Now, young people, I'm going to help you all with something. Everybody who's 35 and older remember a time when there was no technology in, as it relates to social media. When the cell phone came out, nobody really wanted one because it was so big that you had to have three people to carry one cell phone. Come on, anybody remember the cell phone in the bag? You had to, <laughs> and you had to walk around on, just like, yeah, man. You about to catch a hernia just holding the cell phone. It's, it's just, and, and how many of y'all 35 and older remember that we didn't have 24-7 access to evil because TV went off? How do you know when it's time to go to bed? When you see the Star Spangled Banner come on and the flag start waving, it's time to shut up and go to bed. But this generation is different. They have 24-7 access to things that are being exposed to their eyes. Watch this. And they're sitting in a room, laying in a room in a bed, unsupervised, with the world at their fingertips. You never thought about it like this. They're, they're laying in the bed, supposed to be asleep, but have 24-7 access to anything you want to get involved in. I love technology, but do you understand how, how detrimental that could be? For a young, impressionable mind to have all this access to evil with limited supervision. How do I know it's limited supervision? It's limited supervision because technology is not just used for multiple functions. Many people use technology to pacify their children. Wah, wah, she won't shut up. Give her the phone. Yeah. Baby just say, mm. <laughs> Y'all ain't never seen the baby? Mm. Wah. Put the phone in their face. Mm. And that little baby who can barely say mama or daddy can go to YouTube and play Baby Shark 3,000 times. It's shaping us. And remember my, my disclaimer now, it's great, technology is a gift, but it also can be a curse. Because if not used appropriately and correctly, it has the potential to shape our thinking, which ultimately shapes our actions, 
which ultimately shapes, shapes our habits, which ultimately shapes our character. All my young people and everybody who's listening to me this morning, let me give you three things to look for as it relates to the dark side of technology. Look at what the text says. The text says your eye is the light of your body. And whatever you expose to your eyes, it controls your whole body. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light to your whole body. So when your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. Look at the next verse, everybody. Look at the next verse, verse on that, on the, in that same text. Because it also tells us a dark side to it. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Pastor, how do we apply this to technology? I can think that this is a good thing for my child to be looking at, but it may be some undercurrent, undercurrents of dark, darkness. Give them the, just give them the phone. They'll sit down and shut up, but give them the tablet. Go, go over there and play with the tablet. And I'm not saying that you should, after this message, take up the tablets and put them at the altar and put oil on them. And, and I, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but I am suggesting that you may need to rethink how much you allow them to have access to technology. Amen. Go ahead and preach, Pastor. Amen. I am suggesting that our young people have to get to a place where they understand that there are some things my, my spirit and my eyes don't need to be exposed to. Even when mama and daddy and pastor and, and youth pastor and, and deacon and, and, and member and leader is not present, there's some stuff in my spirit I ought to be able to say, hmm, this is not good. Are, are we training our young people to have discernment that when they are exposed to certain things, they know to click off of that immediately? And, and don't tell me, well, I, I'm a good parent. We all, I, I praise God. I believe we, we, we're good parents. But, you know, even these safeguards, you know, these young people are brilliant. There's, there's ways around all that stuff. I know everything my child is watching. Do you? Do you know about the secret account? Let me move on. So I want to give you three things. Everybody say three things. Young people, y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Y'all with me? Okay. Young people in the choir, y'all with me? Y'all taking notes? Okay, yeah. Singles mixer, that's, that's, that's another thing. All right, here it is. Number one, the dark side of technology can bring distraction. Everybody say distraction. distraction. One of the major or main weapons the enemy uses with technology is distraction. Because what we're seeing by way of neuroscience is that technology is shifting young people's focus like never before. Why? Because they're being raised in a generation, watch this everybody, where they're taught to live on these screens all day, every day. And it distracts their attention. Because you can put so much energy into the video game and into the social media stuff that you've abandoned all the other productive stuff that you could be doing. Distraction is a weapon. Watch this, young people, and I want to say this to you. How many of you all, by a show of hands, know what an idol is? I-D-O-L. Xavier, stand up real quick. This is, my, this is my adopted nephew. What's an idol? A false, y'all see, see how intellectual that answer is? It's a false, it's, it's exactly what it is. An idol is a false perception of something that you're worshiping. Man, that's a Oh, that's a great answer. Good, good. So, so watch this. Whatever you can't live that long without is an idol. If, 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 you were to, if you got on punishment as a young person and your parents took your phone and you almost died, <laughs> come on, get, get delivered. I see your hand. Lift your hands. You need to come to the altar, Ashton? You need to come? Okay. It, listen, listen. You take a phone from a young person, oh! Oh, Lord. Oh, 
Jesus. What is one, young, what is one thing young people do, will never let happen? They never want to let their phone die. What, what, is, what is this telling us? That our children are addicted to technology. Do you know that, that, that neuroscientist says that an addiction to technology is, is just like an addiction to a drug? It's the same thing. It's not, okay, cocaine is bad, but technology, uh, no, it's the same exact thing. The, the, you take that phone, they're just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> go, let them go 10 minutes without their phone. What, what my phone? And, and, and adults, don't, don't y'all act like that, because y'all, <laughs> come on, we the same way. Lord Jesus. Not all of us, but some of us. It's an addiction. And it's a distraction. It's a weapon that the enemy is using to distract our attention. We're seeing increased distraction because of technology. Number two, I'm almost done. We're seeing increased depression as it relates to technology. Everybody say increased depression. Let me break this thing all the way down for you. Being consumed by technology can cause you to start seeking approval from other people. Because what is the entire basis, for example, of the social media experience? I post a picture, and I want to see how many people like this picture. I want to see how many people double tap my picture. Give me some hearts. I put a picture. You now you you put a picture out and nobody says nothing. You just listen. They whole world. I was on. I was on. I was on Instagram. I was on the gram and nobody liked my picture. And because technology is shaping your brain, don't miss this. You start living for likes. Who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna comment on my picture? I just put my picture up with me at my homecoming. Who's going to say something about my picture? Three people say something. You're like, dang, three people? <laughs> All these friends I got. Three people like my picture. It's something that's shaping this generation. They're living for likes. Why? Because that's their way of what? Validation and approval. And it is absolutely dangerous. So what's happening? What's happening is that we're seeing is that even though people are increasing their use of social media, it actually causes loneliness. You know why? Don't miss this, young people. Because you think that your online relationships are the same thing as genuine human relationships. I got a thousand friends. That's impossible. I wish I had some help in the building this morning. I don't know what y'all came for. That's all I got. I got a thousand people following me. No, you don't. That's all, on, that's all online. That's just for play play. You don't have a thousand friends. You got a thousand people who's connected to you online. You might be blessed if in your whole life, lifetime you get five real friends in real life. These people don't love you. They will click your picture, like your picture, then talk about what you got on. Child, you see that dress you got? That people don't care about you. And if you, put, and if you put your energy into that, you're going to be depressed thinking, wow, why, 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 I don't have, why I don't have any likes? You know one of the main things that determines whether or not celebrities get hired for certain jobs, certain advertisements? How many followers they have. They will cast a person in a movie, not because, not because of how popular they are, they, they, not, not because they've done 10 movies, but how many of the followers they have online. And they know, oh, that person has a million followers? Oh, we get that person in the movie, it's a possibility that their million followers will come see this movie, which generates revenue. Yes. Yes. It's all a game to get us to seek approval from the world and get approval from people who don't even know us. And it causes depression. Do y'all realize, I don't know how often you pay attention to this stuff, but do you know that the number of suicidal attempts among African-American children and teens is on the rise? And what are they tracing this stuff back to? Online experiences. Cyberbullying. 
Are y'all hearing me today? This, this is the stuff that's happening to our children. And when you give them that tablet and give them that phone to shut them up, you don't realize that without training them to have godly hearts, you may be giving them a death trap. Because yeah. the enemy will use that to depress our children, to make you feel like you're not acceptable because nobody liked your picture. Watch this, everybody. I saw somebody online say this a few weeks ago, and it kind of bothered me. It bothered me because the person says, this is what the, the, the post said, people who like their own pictures are self-centered. So it's just like this rule among young people sometimes that if you post something, you can't like it. But let me tell you something. Shouldn't I like myself? If I put myself, I'm going to like myself. I like me before you like me. Who are you to tell me that I can't like myself? And this is a game. This is stuff that's forming. So what does that say? Don't like your own picture. So that's almost like saying embrace low self-esteem. Are y'all seeing all of these messages that the enemy is giving to our children? If I put something on there and I like it, I'm going to like That's me. I like it. Because I don't need validation and approval from everybody else. If I'm in love with me and I know that God's love me, if you unblock me, if you block me or not, don't follow me, guess what? I'm still good. You know why I don't concern? You know, I believe that if you are a leader and if you are a business person, if you are a pastor, I believe that you have to be engaged in social media on a, re on a regular basis because that's where the fish are. But watch this. You know why it doesn't bother me? If you don't like my picture or, or like my post, I tell people this all the time, because I can't deposit likes in my bank. <laughs> so if I get my message out, when I shared this, when I shared this image the other day of Atatiana Jefferson, who was, who was killed uh, while playing video games with her nephew, a few weeks ago, when I posted this picture, I didn't post this to get comments and, and to get likes. I used my platform to, to be a voice for the things I care about. And plus, I can't deposit that in the bank whether you like my picture or not. How are you using technology? Is it, is it, this, is it a fantasy world that helps you to escape your reality? When all, in, when all actuality is deepening your depression because now you're living for likes. Distraction, depression. Here's the last thing. Might be the shortest message I've preached in a long time. I might keep going longer just to keep y'all. I'm just playing. Number three, demonic influence. Demonic, I say demonic influence. Everybody say demonic influence. The enemy can use technology to place a stronghold on your life. All my young people who do not know what a stronghold is, raise your hand. You, know, you don't know what I mean when I say a stronghold. Raise your hand. Okay, I see little hands. You don't know what, okay, let me tell you what a stronghold is. A stronghold is something that holds you strong. <laughs> uh, come here, Ryan, real fast. Boy, these children get taller every day. Boy, what, what are y'all eating? Good God Almighty, boy. You were just right here the other day. Boy, let's a, a strong, I mean, look at he done, he done passed the pastor. Good God Almighty. A stronghold is, is, a, is something that the enemy uses in your mind that puts a grip on your life. So you try to go that way. Now, when you're trying to move forward, say, it's such a strong grip on you that even when you try to, you can't move forward. Low self-esteem low self -esteem is a stronghold. You, you're not feeling good about yourself. That's a stronghold. You, you're looking for approval from other people. So, so young ladies who dress a certain way to get attention or young men who do certain things to get attention, that's a stronghold the enemy is using to keep, you, to keep you in what we call bondage. That's like slavery. Right? Watch this now. Thank you, Ryan. You know what's interesting about technology? What's interesting about technology, please don't miss this if you are a young person or a grown person or a parent. Listen to me. What's interesting about the stronghold when it comes to technology is that the, the enemy can use it and it's a prolonged type of slavery. You know why? 
because much of what you do with technology in regards to these, so these strongholds is a secret. Your parents don't know that you're watching that site. You've been doing that for three years. They don't know. So, so guess what? So guess what? They, you can never overcome it because you can't overcome what you don't expose. Until you bring it to light, the enemy is going to keep you in darkness and keep you going back to that negative stuff. So why does statistics say, and we went to a conference with our associate ministers a few weeks ago in Atlanta, and this is one of the stats that was given about Generation Z. Gen many, many young people in Generation Z don't see pornography as a sin. Why? Because this, this, this is online. We, it, it's just there. We, we see this all the time. So here's what the devil has done. He has normalized sin. And we live in what we call a postmodern society. So what we call, what we know as sin based on the word, young people see it as normal. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? And what happens? That demonic influence is infiltrating those screens, getting a grip on our children. And we right here talking about Mary had a little lamb, Daniel in the lion's den. That ain't, you, you got to do something else. This is spiritual warfare, people. I said, this is spiritual warfare. The enemy wants the souls of our young people. And how is, he using, how is he using technology? He's using it to pull them further and further away. Demonic influence. Do y'all know that some of this stuff that's on YouTube, these mind games and stuff, I forget one of them, but it's one thing when you look at, what's the name of the one? You look at the screen and the lady is talking to you. Um, telling you to relax. Li li just listen. One of our, one of our uh, uh, young ladies who's associated with our church, she's not a member, but she's visited. She says her daughter was listening to these, these, these games, and I asked some of our young people about it. It's, some of these, it's like a video, and it says, imagine that you're eating potato chips. Y'all know what I'm talking about? What do you call this stuff? Yes. Thank you. Come on now. What is it here? ASMR, asthma is what they called it. Thank you very much. So these things are telling you, just relax. Imagine that I'm rubbing the back of your head and you're just in a peaceful state. Just, just calm, just be calm. What's happening? You're being trained to listen to alternative voices. Yes. Some of the parents look at me like, what, Pastor? So you done bought $1,000 phones and you don't know what your children are watching? I want you to feel some type of way when you leave. You done bought all this expensive stuff, and you don't know that this is the stuff that they're being exposed to. What's the name of the little cartoon that the children was watching? Momo or something? Yeah, and the cartoon was teaching children how to take their life. So while we turning up, watching the reality shows, this is the stuff that our children are being exposed to every day. And we're wondering why these suicidal attempts are on the rise. And we're wondering why our children walk around being depressed and defeated. They're being numbed in the brains. This is the devil we're fighting. Do y'all know that the enemy, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, that we have to learn how to stand against the strategies of the devil? He's so intellectual that he has a strategy for how he's going to take you and your children out. Now watch this, everybody. One of the main strategies he's going to use if you are a parent, watch this, is to get to your children because he knows that that's where many of your affections lie. God, I'm teaching this morning. If your children get pulled away, then it's going to affect your mental health as a parent. She said, what's wrong with my son? What's wrong? I, I just seen such a change in them the last couple of years. They're being, they're being taught to be little robots and little dummies. And you put it in their hand and you walk away and you let this stuff raise your child and you don't realize it's a real devil that's trying to kill your children. It's an attack. Do you realize that the music that is being listened to? Do you remember rap music used to be fun? Party, have a good time. Hey, yeah. We just, man, this stuff is so depressing now. 
all my friends are dead, push me to the edge. I said, what in the Haiti? What is this? I said, who in the world want to listen to this? Am I lying? This is, that's a real song, ain't it? What the boy name? Yachty? Boosie? Uzi. Yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about. Why would I want to listen to somebody named Uzi? That's a gun, ain't it? Push me to the edge. All my friends are dead. Why do I want, to, why do I want my child to hear that? And then many of their favorite young boy had a situation where he was talking about taking his life and all the kids were like, oh my God, oh my God. This is, this, you, can't, you can't expose your mind to this stuff and be healthy. And mental health is a crisis. Why? Much of it, the, the strategy of the screen and it's taking us out and we don't even realize it. Distraction, depression, demonic influence. I'm going to close with this. How do we fix this? Young people, I want you to hear me. And parents, I want you to hear me. How do we fix this? We don't condemn technology and say, no more tablets and no more phones. That's not the answer. Because that's going to push them to sneaking and getting into stuff. So that's not the answer. The answer is, don't miss this, is to raise your children in a godly atmosphere and keeping your children engaged and involved in the church so that their hearts become pure. Are y'all hearing me? And when they have pure hearts, when they click on something and see, oh, no, 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 no. They automatically know that's not, that's not something I need to be on. Does that make sense? But if you're not making your child's spiritual development a priority, how would they have the, the spiritual resources to know that's not something I need to be watching? Especially when all the people, all the young people in my school are talking about this video. So I need to watch this. Who's going to be the young person that say, hey man, y'all call me lame, call me whatever, but y'all know that ain't right. Y'all know when they went and jumped on that girl and y'all recording that, y'all know that that ain't, come on, for real, that ain't cool. Because if that was you, if that was somebody you cool with, you wouldn't want that to be the case. Somebody got to help our young people to have some integrity to say, I'm not getting involved in that. Yeah. Call me what you want to call me. But I'm not going to be a follower and let y'all just pull me, suck me into all of this stuff. And you, can be, and you can still be a good person, be cool, all of that, but you cannot follow the crowd. Yeah. This is your life on the line. I'm not talking about just your tablet. I'm talking about this is your life. And it will kill you. It will take you out. We got to be wise with how we do this. I'm challenging every parent. Do not put your child's spirituality on the back burner. Every time we have Bible study, life class, Sunday school, 3D, whatever, every time we have it, your child ought to be present. Because this is where they're getting the spiritual resources they need to fight against the enemy. It's about discipline. It's, listen, it's what we're teaching our children. We're making it a priority or not. If you, if you let them sign up for the basketball team and they can never miss a practice, but missing church is an option, you're telling them that athletics is more important than God. And let me say this, in love, not to offend anybody, in love, but nine times out of ten, all these children ain't going to the professional league. I don't, want, I don't want to crush your dreams, but I know some of y'all living through your children. They ain't, everybody ain't going to be professional. And we spending money running up and down. That's good if that's your thing. But don't let that over-prioritize your spirituality. See how all my amens just die? My responsibility as your pastor is to teach you and to show you the strategies of Satan. He is trying to kill our children. And your child needs to sit in an environment and learn from these wonderful leaders and teachers that we have in this church. And listen, and have the freedom to be able to discipline your child and to tell your child, you need to focus on this. You need to, this is what we need. Because if you don't, 
you are putting your, you are literally dropping your children off in the wilderness and walking away. I'll say this. There are some people, there are some parents who have not explored the ins and outs of the child's academic experience. So you hadn't been to the school, you, have, you, you don't know. So if you just walk through the schools and you hear some of the conversation, y'all know how it used to be when a, a grown person walked by and you said a curse word, you would, you would, you'd be, you'd be careful. Man, they don't care, they don't care now. I walked into school the other week. I'm doing some volunteer work, man. They said, the guy, guy looking right at me. He, he cursing. And, and listen, and watch this. And knew who I was. Oh, what up, pastor? Yeah, man. Blug it, blug it, blug it, blug it. <laughs> Don't even care anymore. That's the time. So we're dropping our children off in these environments. Phones, all this stuff throughout the day. Screens, sharing this, sharing this, liking. And it's, and it's, it's literally dropping your children off among wolves. And you, pro you, can't, you can't prioritize that over their spiritual well-being because what they receive through Christ and the church is what's going to help them to stand in these evil times. Amen. Amen. That's what's going to help them to stand. Not basketball, not football, all that's good. Do all, but I'm talking about what they get spiritually. And if you are, if, if you're letting your children tell you that you're not, they don't want to go to church, I want you to meet me at this altar. Because All right. All right. Right. how can you let somebody sleep in your house, in your beds, eat your groceries, and say, I don't want to go to Sunday school? The devil is a liar. Everybody going. The rats, the roaches, the cat. Everybody get up. Bringing everybody in. You don't get to say what you ain't going to do. We got to reshape our parental paradigm. Are y'all hearing the pastor this morning? I'm, because I love you, I got to tell you this. We're losing. In many areas, we're losing. I, I, I can't tell you what feels good and what sounds good. I got to tell you. And if you talk to your children, you will be surprised. And because I have relationships with them, listen to me carefully. I know stuff in some regards about your children that you don't know. Because they have said to me, many of them have, countless of them have said to me, Pastor, such and such and such, and my parents don't know. And if it was something that I thought was detrimental to their life, I'm absolutely going to tell you. Oh, yeah. And many of the parents can testify that I've done that. But when, you're, when your children are withholding things from you because they don't think they can trust you, or you're going to, they going to, mama, she's going to go off on me. That's not a good thing. We got to get Christ back into the center of our families and our children's lives. I say we got to get Christ back as the center of our children's lives and our families. I want every young person to meet me at this altar quickly. Every young person. Child, teenager, middle school, I want every one of them to come right here. I want you to come. And I want y'all to clap for them when they're coming, while they're coming. Listen to me carefully. Y'all let them in. Y'all let them real, I want it real tight. Y'all over in this area, I want y'all to come stand right here. Do y'all see how many young people in church this morning? Y'all, I want y'all to come up. I want you to come up. Everybody's standing with me. I want you to look around. This, this represents a generation. We call them, we, not we, but some people call them Generation Z. I did some research and listen to how the enemy is so cunning. You know, the Bible says he's cunning and crafty. You know what that means? He's sneaky. Listen to what the enemy says. I want y'all to listen to this. I'm, I won't say the enemy says it, but listen to how the enemy uses stuff. 
I did some research a few weeks ago, because many of you know that my ministry started as a youth pastor. And that's still a passion of mine. I still preach youth revivals. I teach youth conferences. I still do trainings for churches of how to reach young people. And this is why, because this is abnormal. Churches don't have this many young people in church. I promise you. I promise you. So it's a passion of mine, which I'm, I'm glad it's a passion of the church. But I did some research, Deacon Brown, and you know why they call this generation Generation Z? Because somebody made this comment, because it's going to be the last generation. Z, last letter of the alphabet. I said, whoever came up with that, how do they know that? How do they know that, that, that life is going to end with this generation? You see how sneaky the devil is? Uh -huh. And we use that. I've used that, I've used that terminology, Generation Z. But think about it. Who, how do they know that this is going to be the last generation? Yeah. So what does that say? That says that this generation is not expected to reproduce. Think about it. If life ends with them, the world is over. You see how sneaky the devil is? And that's the reason why all of these attacks come at them. Because it's an assault on the generation. They're facing battles that many of us never had to face. Because we didn't have 24-7 access. To this it's a, it's a battle and if we don't do everything in our powers to teach them to love them to let them get on this stage and use their gifts the world is going to pull them out draw them in and offer them quote unquote love that's what's happening nationally if you study the statistics of African-American churches, this group is running away from church. College students, the ones who were packed out in this church last Sunday, they're running away from churches. Young adults, of which many of our members are young, a young adult demographic, 20s and 30s. Nationally, those individuals are leaving the church because they don't see the church as relevant because we are specializing in answering questions their generation is not asking. And so we beat them up. Y'all need to, you don't need to wear this. Y'all need to sit down. You need, that ain't, that's not how you win people. Love is always the way. Love is always the way. When you see them doing wrong, you lovingly pull them to the side. I had a young person to tell me this. They said, you know, a person said something to me in church. I was visiting a church, and they had a sour look on his face. I said, man, what's wrong? He said, man, this person, you know, was on me about something I said in church. I said, was it profane? He said, yes, sir, it was, it was wrong. And I admitted it was wrong. But listen to what the young man says. But you know what bothered me, sir? I said, what? The person who corrected me in my church don't even know my name. <laughs> so you can tell me all this. Stuff. You don't even know me. You, I mean, it's like. That's not the way. So we have to be leaders. We have to be godly examples to these children. Get to know them. Oh, so it's some wonderful young people. I mean, they're just, and we got we to gotta love. These are, listen, these are ours. They're ours. So no matter how many times they fall, we got to be there to pick them up. We have to be there to pick them up. We're not going to judge them. We're not going to put, put them out. We're going to love them and teach them how to be holy. All my young people that are standing up here, and I didn't do the invitation, so here's the invitation. I want to make sure if any of you, if, testing one, two. If any of you that's standing up here have not been baptized and you want to be baptized, I want you to come stand right here with me. If you're not accepted Christ, come stand right here with me. You haven't been baptized. How do you become baptized? You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart. Hello once again. I hope you were blessed by the worship experience on today. I pray that God's word spoke to your heart, spoke to your mind. And if you're interested in having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to contact us via our website or one of our social media platforms, and we'll be sure to contact you this week about how you can draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Again, I hope you enjoyed the experience. Have a great day.